All right, start. We're really excited to be able to present our finally our final Foundation Alliance quarterly webinar of this year. Um, this will be recorded because I know there are quite a few of our Foundation Alliance members who are not able to attend today. So we've asked for copies of this recording, so we will be making both in our recording and the slides available after the presentation. And we will be sending out information when those links are made available. So let's go ahead and get started. Slide. For to share with you guys, and I'm going to go over today's agenda. I wanted to share some statistics on some great learnings that we had from our recent Nation Advocacy Summit that we had in September, and also share some changes and some exciting news about our 2017 event to get you guys ready to save the date for that. Uh, we're going to share some upcoming toolkits and webinars that we have in production and in planning and where you guys can contribute. We'll share a little bit about our 2017 Foundation Alliance strategy. We have quite a few changes for the group, and they're very exciting, and we look forward to sharing that with you and getting your feedback. And then we will close it off with any questions that you may have. So we'll go ahead to the next slide. Our patient engagement team, we recently changed our name from advocacy to patient engagement, which more reflects the work we get to do, which is working with rare disease patients, patient advocacy groups, and their leaders. So I want to reintroduce my team. As everybody knows, I'm Gary Austria. Um, we have Ashley Yi in the middle, who many of you have talked to regarding our educational programs, like our toolkits and webinars. And our newest member of the patient engagement team, who I'm very excited to share with everybody, a longtime employee of Global Genes, is Amy Garland. So welcome, Amy, and I wanted to invite her to share a little bit about herself. You get to know her and love her as much as Ashley and I do. Amy? <laughs> Thank you, Mary. I'm so excited to um, move over to the patient patient engagement team. I've been on the, as many of you might know, been on the operations uh, event side for many, many years. Um, if you'll see me running around in the background like crazy during the uh, patient summit. Um, so I'm really looking forward to 2017 and working with Ashley and Carrie. And uh, we have some exciting projects for next year. So um, we're looking forward to it. And I look forward to meeting everyone and getting to know everyone. Amy. All right, next slide. Let's jump on in. A little bit next slide of our um, recap of this past uh, patient advocacy summit. As most of you know, we held our fifth annual patient advocacy summit uh, this September, September 22nd, 23rd of this year. And our team was overwhelmed and very humbled with the success and participation from our patient advocates there and the number of speakers. I just wanted to share some highlights with you. We had 589 people attend the event in person. Um, compared to last year's numbers, that's almost a 200 person increase. And it was just astonishing and amazing. And to see so many different disease groups represented. We had over 170 different rare diseases represented, uh, 40 states. We got to get those last 10 states to come next year. Um, feedback what we got from you, from those who attended both on the stream and in person, because speaker sessions, was really positive. I wanted to say a special thank you for those of you who participated in sharing your ideas for some of the summit sessions for this past year that we were able to incorporate and really give a really robust and rounded track conference for those two days. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, I can share a little bit of what we are, a little bit more of what we learned um, from Patient Advocacy Summit this year. Just kind of break it down in terms of the Foundation Alliance and the patient, advocacy, uh, patient advocates who attended. 64% of the people who attended this year's summit were advocates. Um, that's been pretty consistent over the last year. We, there's a nice increase, um, of which 99 were Foundation Alliance members. Now, the 99 actually represents the organizations represented, not the number of people within the Foundation Alliance, because we were really fortunate to have many of our organizations bring multiple board members, multiple staff, and volunteers to and kind of each take different session tracks. They can all collaborate and share what they've learned together. So it was almost one third of our Foundation Alliance in person at the summit. I had a great number of first time attendees, which also kind of lends to the huge increase we had in this uh, year's summit. 
And the amount of travel scholarships we awarded this year was over $100,000. Dollars. That was well over almost 150 scholarships that we were able to distribute this year to get more people to the summit. And we also had over 1,600 live stream attendees, which is an amazing number of people that were able to come from their own homes to be able to view this in real time. Next slide. New change in our venue and the date for next year, so I wanted you guys all to take note of this. I'm going to be moving to the Hotel Irvine. This is about 20 minutes from Huntington Beach, so you're still close to the beach. This is going to be a quick Uber ride to the beach. Um, the reason we chose this facility is a couple of reasons. One, because we're going to be basically taking over the entire hotel with Rare Disease Advocate. Um, it's not going to be another event at the time, and, and everything that goes on that those two days is going to be part of our community, so it's really exciting. And also, the group rate is at $159 per night, which is a significant difference. Um, from what the Hyatt Regency has been posting the last few years. So we're really excited to share that. Um, we have a limited number of rooms at that rate. So we've already opened up the room block. So if you're planning to come for next year, um, we have the link on here. You'll be getting the slides in a few days with this link. Uh, go ahead and register or reserve your room as soon as possible. Next slide. Our pricing structure for this year. So if here we have a different rate for our corporate members, our industry partners, as well as our foundation alliance members, the rate will be $150. Uh, bird prize. We are actually going to be opening our registration on March 1st this year. And excited to get this going. Our events team has been putting together an incredible plan for us for this year, so we're able to open up registration early. Um, who are not part of a foundation alliance are slightly higher. And you can see the different pricing structures for the different levels depending on whether you're an industry, academic, or an advocate. Next slide. Some exciting things for this group here for the summit. We are actually going to be putting together a dedicated foundation alliance member networking event. We don't know what that's going to look like yet. It's going to be an opportunity for those of us who are in the foundation alliance each other to talk and really connect. We're also opening up our exhibitor because we have a wonderful exhibiting space at the Hotel Irvine for Asian Alliance members. So if you want to share your nonprofit with all attendees, which will probably be well over 500, 600 attendees, industry, academia, et cetera, you can get a booth and share your organization with your guests. There will only be a limited number of foundations Alliance booth available. Um, you can email events at globalgenes.org for information on that, and Alex, who is hanging up this event, will be able to help you. One of the things that we are looking forward to is putting together a networking scheduling app for the phones, and some of you have seen them at other conferences. You're able to find someone online or through your phone, and if you want to schedule a meeting with them, you send them a message, and we're working on putting together some kind of opportunity for that. So we're really excited about trying to bring that to you guys as well. And also, we will be having complimentary shuttle to and from the airport uh, to the hotel. So I'm excited about all these changes. It's really going to be much more patient-focused and a lot more opportunities for the Foundation Alliance for this coming year. Next slide. Off to Ashley, who is our senior manager of education programs, who's going to talk a little bit more about our plan for the works for 2017 for those programs. Ashley? Hey, um, so we'll just get started. So, uh, with, the change of our, with the change of our department, I'm actually taking over the Rare Patient Impact Grant Program, which, uh, as many of you may know, uh, seven Alliance members can apply to this program. Um, it's only for our Foundation Alliance members, so this is a really great opportunity if you're looking for either funding for your support or innovation projects or programs. We are going to have our 2017 awardees announced um, January after the new year, and uh, look forward to 2018 um, timelines a little bit later in the year, probably towards spring. But if you have any questions or inquiries about the program up and then, go ahead and contact us at raregrants at globalgenes.org. Uh, of course, as many of you guys probably already know, I am in charge of the toolkits. Many of you guys have probably already talked to me about them and have participated in many of them. 
So we have, of course, some great new 2017 titles, and of course, we would love your help. Uh, the first couple we have is going to be a Speak Easy, a guide to public speaking. This is if you've ever done any public speaking for your foundation, or if you have spoken to media um, sources for your foundation, we would love to hear your story, your expertise, and your experience in this field. We also have another toolkit coming down the pipeline, not until summer, but we would love to do a case study on how to build a future for your foundation. So focusing on what six means for each foundation, whether that is a lot of fundraising, getting a office front, adding paid staff members, whatever success means to you, we would really love to hear your story and how you got to that place. Um, we're going to have nonprofit management professionals weigh in on the strategies you took and, and why you probably were so successful. Um, so we would hear your stories. Again, as you guys probably already know, again, just email me at ashleyyatglobalgenes.org. Um, these are all coming down the pipeline, so if you are, have any interest, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And of course, you guys have also probably had a lot of emails from me regarding our webinars. So we do have our first webinar of 2017 coming up. It's on Health Insurance 101. If you missed our summit on health insurance, um, this is going to be a great uh, companion to it. We also have a health insurance tool coming out to complement both the summit session and this webinar. And we are looking for anyone, especially an advocate, to be our advocate panelist for our financial planning webinar titled Make Sense of Your Dollars. You have had good planning technique in terms of your finances. We know it can be tough or rare disease. We would really love to hear your story. Um, I'd love to always add an advocate onto our panel. So if you're interested in participating um, in that, please feel free to email me. There is my email once again. You'll just see it on a lot on these next few slides. And then we'd also like to introduce a new program that I'm launching called Rare Insights. They're going to be a new education resource that's going to focus on more single um, scope topic and provide more in-depth and everyday um, tools. It will be typically a companion to the toolkits and webinars that are already out. Um, and they're hopefully going to be something that you can kind of take with you. They're going to be a little bit smaller in size, um, but hopefully you can have more everyday tips for you. So a couple of the ones we have in the pipeline is going to be a transition insight series. We have our toolkit that's coming out on transition of care from peds to young adults. This is going to take a deeper dive into some of those more specific details, such as medical care, housing, um, going to college. We're going to kind of break those steps down a little bit more for you. A complementing financial planning piece to the webinar that we'll have. We're going to be working, bringing in the world of um, dietitians and nutritionists to help us with a nutrition insight. And also, we're going to have a small piece on who's who in healthcare, an easy everyday resource for you all to know who are healthcare professionals or healthcare adjacents that you can always um, look out for just so you have that knowledge. Um, we are looking for experts, quotes, testimonies for these insights. So if you have any interest in any of these topics, again, please feel free to email me. And Oh, this one is in here. And then lastly, as um, some of you may know, we do offer Foundation Alliance webinar tech support to our um, Foundation Alliance members. This, um, the new bill is something Carrie will discuss a little in a little bit. But just as a reminder, we do offer technical and use of our webinar platform called WebEx. They're meant for Foundation Alliances to conduct their own educational or support-based webinar. The service is one time per every 12-month period currently, and we do all the work for you. We'll set the registration site, provide polls, reports, recordings, anything of the sorts. They'll all be given to the foundations for their own use. If you would like to find out more information or are interested in hosting your own webinar, please feel free to email me. These are just a list of a couple of foundations that took advantage of this opportunity in 2016, um, and I hope that, you know, I think a lot of them are interested in doing it again for 2017, so as long as we have the time frame open. We're more than happy to provide this service for you. So please feel free to contact me if you guys are interested. And I think that's it, Carrie. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. Can you head on to the next slide? Our strategy, our new plans for 2017 for this group. This group was started a few years ago as a way to kind of collect best practices and network. It's grown into something much more powerful. 
we've seen in the, the Foundation Alliance for the last, especially year, the amount of sharing and the amount of lessons and mentoring that we've all done as a group and introducing each other to what we're working with has been incredibly powerful to watch and we really want to build upon that. So some of the things that I'm going to share a little bit is our new Foundation Alliance membership portal. We in beta test next week. Um, some leadership opportunities and how we're going to kind of build the Foundation Alliance into a bigger entity that you can have much more involvement in and some initiatives that will come from that, and our new membership structure. So if you can go ahead to the next slide. What we have gotten many times, especially over this past year, is the ability to share information, whether it's sharing events, membership directory where you can actually email the contact, discussion form outside of Facebook, because we've learned that very few of our Foundation Alliance members are actually on Facebook, a place to share resources, and things that. So we've been really testing out a, a number of great platforms and found one that we're going to put beta tests and I'd actually want to go through this. Uh, we're actually going to be looking for some beta testers. So if this is something that you're interested in helping us out with over the next two weeks, um, you will be able to email me and we'll get you set up. So if you can go ahead to the next slide. The portal option has for us that we it would give every person in the Foundation Alliance a membership profile, um, both personal and with your organization. But as you see, I put together my test one. Um, it shares not only who I am, but my organization and has its means of contacting me. Um, what you don't see on this page is the email button, but it's also on there as well. So it's a really great way to actually get to know the members of the Foundation Alliance as well. Uh, there's file sharing, one of the things that has really come up a lot in the Facebook is the ability to share whether it's sponsorship information, um, codes of conduct, research files, things like that. We're going to be building out a really robust file sharing portal. And we're also going to have our own Wikipedia, our rare disease Wikipedia. This is a very limited just full of some of the things we were playing with. I want to create based with your help because everybody will be able to participate to these incredible resources. So if you have resources, let's say, for a nonprofit organization, for you know, volunteer cultivation, fundraising, et cetera, you'll just share those links with the entire Foundation Alliance. We're having disease-specific pages. For example, if Echo Weldon is on the call, um, if SYNGAP has its own page, she can list links to the mission so that as if another Foundation Alliance member is interested in SYNGAP, be a quick and easy page with these links. It's not meant to replace sites or like a Wikipedia. It's not going to have the robust information, but it will give links to where people can find that robust information. Next slide. What I'm excited about is being able to put together an events calendar for the Foundation Alliance. Our goal is to have each organization be able to share their events with the Foundation Alliance, and this is one of the sample events, obviously, I put in with our next Patient Advocacy Summit for next year. And we want you to be able to share with each other for a multitude of reasons, including one, you might have people in that local area, an event is being hosted, even though it's not your rare disease, you may want to support a Foundation Alliance member and attend the event. You can from what, you know, their agenda, the way they manage their conference, Work with the families. So this will be an opportunity to be able to share all these events with each other. Next slide. This was next idea. One of the things we've always had in our mind to do is, is corporate uh, foundation alliance committee. Um, Global Genes, we love being the catalyst of putting this group together. But we know what we know, and we only know what we know because of talking to our Foundation Alliance members. What we want to do is really take the strengths of our Foundation Alliance leadership and the committee around it and work with that committee to tell us what does the Foundation Alliance need. You are out in the beat. You are working with researchers, with legislators, with family support systems. We want to learn from you what we can do, what Global Genes can do as an organization to provide better resources and support for you. So building out a corporate alliance, our Foundation Alliance Committee next year, and we're going to have two different types of participation options for you. Looking for two co-leaders. Um, those are going to be heading up this Foundation Alliance Committee to help drive 
the direction on the way this committee goes, the initiatives it works on, et cetera. So just committee members who are willing to dedicate time to work with the leadership of the Foundation Alliance as well as the Global Genes team to really source resources for this group. Um, so we do want also that Foundation Alliance create an initiative, some kind of initiative. Um, one of the ones that I just mentioned is the best practices for foundation futures, those case studies. That could be something the Foundation Alliance Committee supports on and gets or gets a, information for. A couple other things, talking to various members of our Foundation Alliance is putting together some kind of best practices for volunteer staff organizations, including resources for nonprofits that the committee will return. Uh, we're still building out the skeleton of that, so on the next quarterly call in 2017, I'll be able to share more details with you. But in the meantime, if this is something that you're interested in, say that it will be made available to you very soon. Next slide. Announcing a new membership structure for the Foundation Alliance. As this program gets more, more it gets more involved, we really want to make it much more robust. We have two levels of membership. Uh, the first one is a complimentary membership, um, which will contain everything we do right now, the one-on-one -on -one support membership portal that we will be building out, which will be a great way for you to continue networking and creating stronger relationships within the Alliance. Ashley in our toolkits and webinars, and a lot more networking opportunities. Now, with sliding scale that we're we'll offering for this additional stru membership structure, this is where you can get the discounts for the summit and gala. We'll be eligible to participate in the impact grant for 2018. The webinar supports that Ashley mentioned, as well as additional opportunities that we are putting together. The sliding scale will be based on the budget, annual budget for each organization, because we recognize that. That so groups that have very little to no income are different abilities to be able to participate in a membership fee structure as opposed to an organization that has a $5 million budget. So that pricing structure looks yet like yet. We'll be announcing that within the next few weeks. What we are going to be doing at the beginning of the year is we're going to require all Foundation Alliance members to re up their membership. And the reason we want to do that is because we really want to know who to be active in this Foundation Alliance. We have over 350 organizations on our list. We really want to know who are the organizations we can get really close with. I mean, there are over 100 of you that I know of. Most of them on this call right now, I recognize many of the names, have been able to develop such a great relationship and sharing with. I really want to build on that even more. So we will bring out more information in the next few weeks on this membership re-upping and structure. And if any questions at any time, please feel free to email me. I'll be more than happy to answer that. Next slide. I wanted to share with you, this is an opportunity where we really need your help. Um, you may have received an email to the Foundation Alliance regarding our rare self-ID tool, a project of our Medical Science Advisory Board. We're trying to determine a way to answering some simple questions if a person may have have a rare disease. Um, we're in stages of this, but we really do need your help. Our survey is available, which you can see the link on here, and I will send it out again. I want people both with a rare disease to take this survey, as well as those that don't. We're going to be able to judge on the answers whether or not this is a useful tool. So please go ahead and forward this to your friends, your family, anybody you think that may be able to participate. It's only a quick five minutes. Right. So next announcement, um, our major partners at Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases is hosting their DC uh, Rare Disease Week in DC next February. They do have scholarships still available. The deadline is December 18th. It's $300 to $1,000 depending on how far you're traveling. I know that if you're in Maryland, you know, you're very close, it's going to be $300. If you're coming from Hawaii or Alaska, It'll be dollars. So I definitely would encourage you if you're planning to go to DC to apply for a scholarship deadline. You still have 10 days. And giving priority to first time advocates because they want to get new people there as well. You get a lot of returnees, and it's probably one of the most fun weeks. If you haven't gone yet, I've gone multiple times, and I hope to go again this year. Um, 
it's an amazing opportunity to bond and connect. And at our huge success with the Senate yesterday for 21st Century Cure, which thank everybody who participated in that. We were like all screaming and crying yesterday. Our rare disease community is so incredibly powerful because you work together when it comes to legislative issues that we need to support. Again, reach out to Stephanie for more information. The link will be on this slide deck. We are asking that if you have a newsletter, if you would please add our at globalgenes.org to your distribution list. It's another way for us to be able to keep up with what you're doing and be able to reach out to you on, you know, exciting news that you may have. Um, we've learned a lot of new things just from the few of you that have added us. So thank you so much. It's been great seeing the research and the support systems and some of the programs that you guys have come up with. It's very creative. And again, the testers are needed for the new member platform. So please feel free to email me. I set up on that. Finally, if you have uh, any toolkit or webinar suggestions, I'll actually um, have the best information, the best resources, and the most amazing experience to be able to get these webinars such a rich content. So now, I'm going to open it up to any questions. So if you have any questions, please put them in your chat box, and Ashley and I would be more than happy to answer them. In time, I wanted to... Oh, go ahead. Okay, do you want me to try to unmute everyone? And then if everyone wants to just mute back on their end, they can just openly ask the question on the on the or do you want them to use this chat function? Well, let's open up and that way we can see if anybody has any questions they want to ask. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone in just a moment. If you can mute yourself on your end, that would be really appreciated. Um, and then you guys can go ahead and ask openly the question, and we can all hear it. So I'm going to unmute everyone. Do you have any questions? Mute again. Pound six or six pound? Hi, <laughs> Carrie. Hi, guys. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> I, I had a question about the co-leadership position for your volunteer uh, committee. Uh, do you know if this is a um, uh, if this is something that you travel for? I know it said the time commitment is to be announced, but can, do you, can you estimate the time? Maybe yeah. it's not going to be a travel position. Um, also, I'm coming to the Senate next year so we can talk more in person. The time committed is based on the call volume. Um, we are going to work with the new leadership structure to determine how often to have calls with the committee and the work that the committee does. It will depend okay. on what kind of initiatives the committee puts together. Okay. And we just got a question from Mr. Steve regarding the slides. The slides and the recording will be made available. Anybody have any questions? All right, guys, it made it real easy. Um, I want to say thank you from our team, and we want to wish you guys all the best holiday, and we're excited to get started.